right, we are live. Thank you everyone for your patience today. I am absolutely so excited. Um, you guys have seen uh, all the different stuff we do. And if you want to find more videos and all kinds of great stuff, the content's all free. You can go to my blog at jillcarnahan.com. All free, literally 10 years, a decade of content there on health, functional medicine, how to reverse chronic illness. You know what I talk about, mold and Lyme and chronic illness and inflammatory bowel disease. So go there, find free content. Um, today is really special to me because this is like an old soul friend who I just met, but we've been, we've known each other hundreds of years, I think. <laughs> so um, I'm super, super excited today. Um to introduce Spencer Barnes from LA. And we'll tell you in just a minute how we met and I will let him tell you a little bit about his story. Um, you can find all the old recordings either here on Facebook or on the YouTube channel under my name, jillcarnahan.com. And like I said, today is just a little different because instead of a doctor, which sometimes we have experts and honestly, sometimes they get a little boring, right? Today will not be boring, I promise you, because I've got my stylist from LA and he is amazing human being. He's a soul friend. He's one of those people you just instantly connect to and know. And we'll tell just a little bit about how we met, but um, I am just absolutely delighted to be here with you, Spencer. Thank you for taking the time to join me. Of course, I was the second you asked, I was like, absolutely. You know, Dr. Jill and I met, yes, working on a shoot. Uh, we were, we're doing some promo work to get ready for her documentary, which I cannot wait for, by the way. Um, I'm so happy you're doing this. I'm so happy you're having conversations that allow people to explore and open up new avenues for total health and wellness. So thank you for all that you do. And if you don't, don't know Dr. Jill, she's got like a waiting list for years. Uh, she's incredibly difficult to get into. So I feel lucky just to have sat with her and worked with her for a few days. Um, yes, we instantly connected and had a bond that was, it was kind of crazy. We were like talking and then we were like, we have the same language. I and then each other's sentences, right? It was just like, oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, I went there and, and this is my impression. So I'm just a farm girl from Illinois. And then somehow I went to medical school to pursue my dream. I've always been, I've been a healer. So that's the thing. And honestly, here you are and you're a stylist in LA. You work with some of the most famous people in the world. I mean, you really, I felt like who in the world am I to be going out to LA to work with this amazing group that Charlie, our producer put together. I felt like completely out of my league. And what happened is not only did you make me feel at home and, and make me feel welcome, um, but you, you kind of validated because what we're talking about today, what we're going to go into is um, the inner beauty and the things that bring about the shine and the joy and the, the things it doesn't take makeup's amazing. And you are the best in the world. I think <laughs> at making, uh, like you made me look beautiful on the shoot. Uh, but the neat thing that we both understand and have in common and want to share with our listeners today is just, you don't have to have perfect skin or perfect hair, or perfect makeup. The true beauty that people are drawn to like a magnet is your soul. And when you go and you try to, and what happens is so many of us, we show up with a mask, right? Or we feel like we're not enough. I have had over 40 years of learning that I am enough. And that whole old message around not being enough. Um, once mm. I shed that, right? Because we all have, yeah. that. I'm not unique. Yeah. But when we have that, we have to feel like we have to show up as something that we're not. And people can see it, sense that. So even if they're like, something's not right about this person, and so what we want to talk about today, and I want to hear from your perspective about all the different types of people you've worked with, we won't name any names, but I want to compare and contrast um, how does authentic beauty show up? And my take on it is just the more we get our personality aligned with our soul. So our soul's purpose, like mine, I know my sole purpose is to love people. It's so simple. And I don't uh -huh. have to do a perfect job, right? But if I can show up and, and do my best in that day or that moment or that hour to just love my patients, my friends, my family, the people in my life, my soul and my personality are aligned in that on an energetic level comes through loud and clear to the people I'm talking to as not only authenticity, but beauty, because we love to see someone who's aligned with their soul and personality, yeah. right? So I'd love to hear, again, you've worked with some absolutely amazing <laughs> people. I felt like I was so out of my league, but what happened in LA was magic. Wasn't that weekend just spectacular? It was spectacular out in Malibu. We just had like one thing after the next. It, it was three days together and it went by in like a flash because we were so, every moment was just filled with so much magic and connection. And, and those are the times where, you know, okay, this was definitely, I felt like, how did this come together with this incredible team? Uh, it was truly orchestrated. Uh, it felt like 
I helped from the other side. I don't know, but it was magical. I um, could not agree more. And you know, from my perspective, you guys have never seen the, like you saw me there and I felt like I was able to show up authentically, but I've been on a journey as we all have been. And those of you listening, if you're in the middle of a journey, you're struggling, just let me encourage you. We're all on a journey. And the thing that yes. happened for me there, Spencer was, I'm kind of a control freak. So like what I wear and the things I need to survive, <laughs> my food and my water and everything. And what I got to do there for the first time in such a big way was I got to go there and let go of all control. Like everybody, I, I would walk in the closet and say, what do I wear now? You know, <laughs> and that's, it's not me because I'm a planner and like had it. So letting go of all control and just letting all of you on the team guide me. And then even mm. more than that, like I was silly and playful. We climbed into things that said, do not. <laughs> you enter, <were>. right? <laughs> it was so fun. I felt like I was literally back and like I, the only, the thing that comes to mind is elementary school when you're so young that you're free spirited and whatever you do with, you know, your friends, you just like go there and you're a hundred percent there. And it was like that with you. And I, I love unlocking that kind of magic. I, I just want to start by saying two things. So with what you're saying, yes, we are, I think we can all agree. This planet is undergoing something major. Yeah. We have through this global experience uh, that, that came into, to being just last year, mm -hmm. early last year, um, facing things none of us have ever faced individually or collectively before. And that's powerful. So this great shift, uh, whatever the outcome may be for each of us individually is something we're all going through. Um, so what an opportunity to transform and transcend and shift into what I hope is a much better version of reality, a much better new earth. And so uh, this is part of what, what I feel like I'm here to do for myself and for others. Um, a little bit about my background. I also grew up in a small town in exotic Provo, Utah. It's kind of known, uh, Provo is known as Happy Valley. Um, I'm third of seven children. We had a big family and uh, it was a great place to grow up. Lots of nature and outdoors. We were very active. Um, I was also very involved in art and music and acting and uh, fitness, outdoors, uh, music, sports, acting. It was, it was a pretty full life. Um, between the age of eight and 23, I was in over a hundred productions, including some television and film productions and commercials that came through Utah and lots of stage shows of all kinds. So that was sort of my background. And when I was young, I just have to say, I remember thinking the world was a little off. As soon as I came into the planet, I was like, this feels sort of like, not like home, but it's home. Okay, I can accept that. Um, and I, I kind of began a quest and I thought, I wonder if I could somehow make the world and people and my environment more beautiful, that maybe life would be more beautiful. And so I think you, you said your mission is to love people. Mine is, is related in that it's to help people remember who they truly are uh -huh. by beholding them, by seeing them, not, not the exterior masks right. that we all have, not the filtered, distorted lenses that we quickly have put on us from the moment we're born, by, you know, from the family patterns to the, the community things. Some of us may have had religious backgrounds, our educational, uh, whether it's a certain country or, or place we grew up in, all of these contribute to the filters that are put on us that distort our lens on reality, which becomes the tool we deal with for self-development. So um, for me, I when I was 22, I, I thought, I think, I thought I was invincible. You know, everything I set out to, I was able to accomplish. I had endless energy. I could work long hours on a project. And when I was about 20, almost 21, 20 and a half, like right before I turned 21, I started develop, actually it's no, almost 22. I started developing a, a lot of problems with my intestinal tract, which I never had any health issues. I was very healthy. And I just started bleeding a lot. like. I, first it started as like diarrhea that didn't go away. And then I noticed, I was like, whoa, that's like nothing but red. What's going on? Oh, I must have eaten something. And I thought, you know, there's nothing I ate that could have done that. And I watched and it was constantly, it was blood. Yeah. So I was a little concerned. I thought it would go away and it didn't. So I, I called my mom and I was like, oh, what's going on? This is, have you ever seen this? And she was like, whoa, how long has that been going on? So after a couple of weeks, it was getting really intense. Like I, yeah. I think I was in the bathroom 30, 40, 50 times a day. Yeah. And it was just this intense cramping pain. And it was, 
getting to the point where I couldn't function. I didn't dare to leave the house because I might just suddenly have to, to run to the toilet. So I said, I'm like, I think we need to go to the doctor. And so we called and found a specialist and they had a long waiting list. And uh, I said, no, I think we need to get in sooner. So they pushed us forward and he did a, a scope. And uh, through that, he discovered that indeed I had, uh, he diagnosed me with ulcerative colitis. And I thought, okay, well, great. Give me the pill. Let's, let's get it handled and get back to life, you know? And he didn't, he looked at me with kind of a that look that, oh, I don't think you realize what this means yet. This is going to be a bit of a journey is what I gathered quickly. And when I looked over and my mom was crying, I was like, I don't have cancer. I'm not dying. Like, you know, but it, it was pretty serious. And, and I thought, well, maybe this is just going to be something that comes and goes, but it didn't. It was something that I would get very ill and then I would slowly get my energy back after what, what was known as a flare up would go back into remission. And, you know, I tried a lot of things. I started doing research. I'm a researcher. Yeah. Uh, I love science. And actually I was, I was in school. I was studying to be a cosmetic surgeon. Wow. Uh, but uh, this is what happened when I, when I got really sick, I was not able to, I had to eventually drop out of school and handle my gut health issues and have some surgeries. Um, because it was so aggressive. I was, I had lost, I think 40 pounds in, in that period of time. And, uh, it was, it was debilitating. It was really debilitating. I remember feeling isolated and it was hard for even some of my family members to relate to because they, you know, they didn't know. And it's, a, it's a kind of thing that it becomes a very internal yes. world illness because you live with it in solidarity and yeah. it does affect your, your, your state of, presence your ability to sort of confidently take on things because you're constantly you know if I went anywhere it was like I had to map out where the bathrooms yes. were and know where I was going to be you know and it was, it was sometimes scary and I sometimes wasn't able to go places because of that so I just wanted my life back and uh Dr. Jill and I found that we had a similar story so I began trying to reach out to people this is pre you know Facebook pre where internet was just you know a simple tool to find some things, but um, I started anything and everything, holistic diet changes, which helped a little bit. I did change my eating a lot and that helped a little bit, but it wasn't enough. Um, I tried all of the known drug remedies, uh, things like infliximab or, you know, they had me on prednisone a lot, which had a lot of awful side effects. Oh, uh, awful. And I thought this cannot be the way, this, this can't be like my future life to live this way where I'm just constantly yo-yoing between barely getting along health to back into a full-blown uh, attack. And after about almost two years, it was about a year and a half, I said, this, this isn't going to work. And I, I started talking to people who had done a more drastic move, but I felt like this was what I needed to do. Yeah. And uh, I was fortunate enough to meet someone who had had, he was actually my age, maybe a little younger, who had had the surgery that I was considering. It's called a J pouch ilioanal surgery. Yeah. So it's a pretty major surgery. They took out my entire large intestine and used the end of my small intestine to create uh, basically a fake colon, you know, a small J shaped colon and attach it to my rectal stump so that I would be able to have mm -hmm. full bowel control and, you know, a normal life without having to wear an external pouch. Right. You know, I, I didn't want a colostomy bag or an ileostomy bag the rest of my life, you know, if, if possible. So I found the best surgeon. He's actually the doctor who happened to be at my home state, the University of Utah, wow. that created this surgical technique. And uh, so he did my surgery and I was on the table for about 12 and a half hours. Oh, and unbelievable. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said it was, it was, it was an intense surgery and, uh, I remember actually in recovery, I, did, I, I didn't realize that I almost I could have died. You know, I, I was really sicker than I even realized. And um, there's so many, I, you know, we don't have time to go into all the details, but there were so many things that I look back now and was grateful to have some, like a friend who'd had a liver transplant who intuitively knew that this was a pretty major thing. Um, even my family was just like in shock a little because they didn't know quite what to expect. And um, I'm so glad that that doctor was able to help me get into full recovery. It took about six months. And then I really was starting to feel like myself again. 
How many years 23. ago was your surgery, Spencer? How many years ago was this? So I'm 44, so it was literally half my life ago. Okay. Oh my gosh, we're like the same age too. I'm 45. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Cool. I can't believe all that you've accomplished in yeah. your, your life. It's amazing. Well, you too. So go back and we have all the time in the world. So you're still, so you had someone oh, cool. liver transplant that was actually kind of, you're right. You know what? You just hit on something so key. And I think to the people who are listening to um, that isolation, I just talked yesterday to two patients with the documentary and both of them had this story about chronic severe illness, like you and I have had. Mm-hmm. And there was this isolation feeling like I talk about mask, right? You, you can, there's a few inner circle people that really know your full story and the extent of your suffering, but the general person, when they say, how are you doing? They don't want to know you're losing your colon, right? And you're like having to run to the restroom every 20 minutes. And again, I had Crohn's disease, very, very similar. And initially it was diagnosed as ulcerative colitis as well. So I too Oh yeah. See, it's like this. They later change the diagnosis. Yes. Yes. So the, what you're saying though, is so relevant to the people listening and that isolation when we have chronic illness and feeling like, like people don't really get it. Right. And you look okay on the outside. I mean, granted you probably lost weight like I did, but generally you look okay. So for people to see you, they're like, well, you look fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. (laughs) And you know, and I was young, I was so young. My colleagues were, were doing all these things and I was like, I can't go. I I was pulling back and everyone was just like, okay, I guess you're sick, you know? So um, fortunately I I did get back to health, but I still was a little baffled. Like, why did I get, what what happened that caused this? Why did I get this? You know? And they said, well, it's probably, you know, pre predisposition to genetics, but I, you know, both sides of my family, no one that I knew of had any serious issues though. I discovered an uncle who had a a Mm -hmm. short brief bout with what seemed to be some sort of a, a bowel issue. But other than that, it was, it was not present. So I was still, still wondered what really this was all about. And later uh, in life, uh, I had some experiences that were sort of unusual. I was introduced to some intuitives through my agent, and back when I was acting a lot, she's like, I really want you to meet this guy. I feel like, or this woman, I feel like she can help you. And, uh, It was totally unrelated to this, but this intuitive mention just off the cuff, this is the first time I met this person. I was actually 18. So it was before that she said in her reading, she said in a past life, you you know, you had died of this tragic, uh, it was more tragic. It was maybe related to either a family member or someone who was close to the family, but you were stabbed in the stomach and that's where she she left it. And I thought past life, I don't even know if I believe in that, you know, just trying to get through this life. And so it didn't really resonate. I shelved it and forgot about it, to be honest. But then the same agent, when I was 24, almost 25, she's like, I have someone else I want you to, this was a different intuitive. And my agent was also getting into healing a lot. And since then has switched her career to uh, a lot of really cool healing modalities. But this intuitive said a similar thing, but went into more detail. And I thought, wait a minute, I heard this before. Mm but it still didn't quite click until I was 35, wow. which was years later when I crossed paths with someone by, to- you know, you think by total chance, it was the last five minutes of the last day at a huge music festival here in California called Coachella. Mm-hmm. And I met someone that as soon as we met, I've, I'll never forget. It was like an electromagnetic energy vortex was open and I knew that I knew this person instantly. And from that point forward, I began to, it was, it was, a, I can't go into the whole story, but I began to understand that we had a past life connection mm. and we ended up meeting. He was actually, from, he is from Iceland. That's where he lives uh, to this day. So it was very unusual for us to meet uh, at a place like this, but we developed a, a powerful friendship and connection and saw each other in different places of the world the next year ahead. And um, it was after we had kind of this karmic wound reopening that I was able to begin to really deeply heal and understand on a soul level, why this illness came through in this life and what there was for me to heal in the sacral wound area of my body, you know, the gut area. And so through that, uh, not only did I uh, open things that I never would have imagined would be possible to open, but I also, not only healed uh, things that I didn't even know need to be healed, I pulled through all kinds of gifts that to this day have served me and allowed me to help other people through their journeys. Um, you experienced firsthand, not a lot of people know, but I'm kind of a closet 
psychic medium uh, that uh, it's getting harder for me to, to hide because it's getting a lot stronger and clearer. And I work with a lot of people, and though I don't do really, you know, I'm not going to open shop and do readings. That's not really my purpose. Whenever things come through that feel guided, I just offer it up. And if the person's in a place to receive, that's usually a sign that they're on that same frequency. I share what I can. And, and it's been amazing to see what, what, what's possible to pull through with that gift. And that's part of the healing that I bring through the work I do as a makeup artist. You know, I work with, yes, image, the external shell, but there's this intrinsic connection with our internal self and our external self. And if we can help marry the two and clear the illusions, it's amazing to see how the authentic light of, of a person can be unleashed and unlocked by, by bringing that to the forefront and clearing away that which is not self. So that's something that I, I really think is why I've had a, a huge uh, success that I never anticipated really yeah. being a makeup artist. I mean, even that's a story. It just sort of happened and it happened really quickly. Yeah, how did that happen? Because this is so fast. Because here you were a cosmetic cert, you know, going to kind of this this pathway and there was this shift and then here you are. But when I see you, like I knew the moment I met you, you're a healer and we don't so, have to be in the medical profession to be healers. And it's funny because I went into medicine not knowing I was a healer, but clear, I mean, and what you, what you um, touched on is so important with both of us and totally different professions I feel like I uh, I'm a scientist at heart and I learned all the science in medical school and you like that too right like that's a piece of the foundation the study like you said why did this happen you wanted to learn and research and I've done that all my life but what I found is a lot of times now the the real truth and magic comes from listening to that intuitive voice which comes from experience and for you too, it's like seeing that person for who they are, giving them, holding space for them to just show up and be authentically them. And so often we go into spaces where there's judgment, there's fear, there's threat, there's control. Mm -hmm. And what you did for me and all of the team, and then hopefully what I'm doing in the office for patients is creating a space that is free of threat or control or judgment or fear and just purely love and allowing that space for them to show up authentically without any fear or, or thing that keeps them from being themselves. Because when they come and they share, you know, deeply of their story and I can listen and hold space um, often because of experience and because of the science background, I can really listen and hear things that maybe nobody else has heard and make conclusions yeah. and solve mysteries that no one has ever solved because that intuition comes in. And what I learned is that, that, um, so I always think of like left brain is like an old computer and that's like science. You can make checklists. You can put hundreds of pieces of data together in your analytical mind. But when yes. we look to the right brain, the creative, the experiential, the intuitive, what you can literally subconsciously process millions of pieces of data in an instant. And I can often have the diagnosis on that level before I ever prove it with science, because I'm just listening to my heart and my soul and sensing where to go. And then I still prove it with the labs and the science. So I'm a good scientist, but what you're saying is a similar thing. You're looking at a person, you're holding space for that person in front of you. And you're actually creating, you did this for me. Cause as soon as I got in your chair, I was like, oh, I like this guy and he sees me like I could, I could cry because there's so few people in the world that create that space for you to be seen and you do that. And that's magic. And that's a gift of healing that you offer to the people who sit in your chair. You know, thank you. A, and, and I too have learned that by beholding someone, mm -hmm. which is seeing them without any judgment, which is, is a part of unconditional love. Yes. And that's hard to always do. There's things when we get put into our, our states are lowered when we're in stress, mm -hmm. or if we feel judgment, often we get defensive and our, and our defense systems go up. So when we're doing the work we do, it is so important for me to create a, an environment where there's trust. Yeah. And trust brings that ability for intimacy to happen. And that's when authenticity rises up and things that need to be cleared, if there are things that are holding us back from greater authenticity uh, come up. And, then we can arm people with the courage to become everything that they are really truly meant to be. And so like you through your work, uh, it's, they're very different, but they're related. You know, and I know that a lot of the girls and, and guys too, I primarily work with women, uh, but I've worked with lots of men. They all are, there's some, you know, we all have a purpose. We all have a sole purpose. And sometimes people are meant to work within their communities or family lines or within a specific profession. Um, whereas others, you know, maybe they bring incredible inventions and new knowledge into the earth to help build the foundation and blueprint of a new reality. 
while others, you know, through their healing work, help support those that are meant to become public messengers, those who are meant to be in the limelight and, and influence a lot of people as archetypes, maybe through the roles they play as actors or yeah. as creators and artists that speak on a number of things. So I realized quickly that, that this is the work that I'm doing with my girls. And if I can help them align with that, yeah. I call that the magic zone. When we can align with our authenticity, we're freer, we're more like we require less energy to create more magic. Yes. We're brighter. And I know you've seen this where someone can walk into a room that's that's ignited with their true light. They are like a magnet, a lighthouse. They beam and people are inexplicably drawn to them. Yes. Or those that are at least on that same frequency are, are drawn to connect with them. And it's pretty effortless. And so I think anything we can do to, to first ourselves get into that space and then to help bring that to others it sends ripples in every direction and the world does become a better place life is more beautiful yes I love it and again what you're doing I just talked to a friend and she had done some work with me in healing and um and I was telling her um she's a naturopath and so she's just amazing and I literally just got back from that appointment a couple hours ago and I was telling her you know I was in tears and I'm like you know, my friend, um, what you don't realize is, I mean, here I am making a documentary and I think that people will see it and will make an impact in the world. And I'll tell that brief story in just a second because I think it's related to your authenticity. But what I told her is um, every person like you in my life who supported me and helped me in my healing journey and seen me and then encouraged me or um, brought truth into my life, I realize I'm, we're all standing on the, the shoulders of those around us who are lifting us up and helping us to heal. And I'm just like so grateful every day because I know that the journey I'm on right now is only because the people who love me and have poured into my life and my healing. And even you in the time in LA, like you were one of those healers for me. Because here I show up in the world a lot as a healer, but then I feel like God puts in my life all of these other people around me that lift me up. And I know I could never do what I do without all this, you know, crowd of people that is helping me. And my little story, you mentioned the documentary. I haven't really talked a lot publicly. There's little glimpses, but if you're listening now, I'm going to tell you real briefly the story I told Spencer because it has to do with authenticity. I had a lot of learning to do last year and I got out of several very difficult relationships. But the biggest lesson that came out of that, that just like you said, our souls need these lessons. And so I feel like the divine often brings illness or suffering or difficult relationships because it's teaching. And if we can embrace those as like teachers, like I've had some really bad relationships and they were all teachers and they brought me to a place where I realized number one, I'm worthy of love. And, um, and number two, I can trust my soul and intuition because even in the midst of difficult relationships, my soul, my intuition always knew there's something not right here, but I didn't trust myself. And, um, so then I got through that and I really started to believe in the value that God has given me and then also trust my journey and trust my intuition and everything shifted from there Spencer January 1st I woke up and I had this idea you know since COVID hit people are more on screens than ever before and I'm writing a book but what if I could be on a screen and teach what I want to teach about healing and reach more people than the book and I just literally had the idea within seven days I had a producer a director executive assistant like wow. people, they just came together and I was like what? That's a sudden, that is what's meant to happen and even I you hadn't told me yet and I was like when we were together I was like what I see why do I see you having a sh it's like a show like uh, it's like a talk show, but it's like, you know, and then I say, and I feel that you're making a, some type of a film and you're like, I have a By the way, <laughs> you're like, yes, yes. I'm like, there you go. It's I know. Like, like, that's what I mean. Like you just saw me and saw, and then, so then, and then of course you need a large budget. I won't say the number, but it's a lot of money. We had the producer yeah. put together and I don't, you guys, I'm a doctor. I don't have a clue about filmmaking, but I have <laughs> this intuition. And so, and I followed it. And what I did before I even started, again, this is a divine thing. I, I created a production company. Like I was like, okay, I'll just move forward. And then um, what happened in the next few months is we had a budget and I just trusted, I had this sense of like, I don't know where this money's coming from to make the film, but I know that if it's supposed to happen, it will. So it was this weird thing of like, wow, this is crazy, but also just the assuredness that if I'm on the right path, that will come. Well, just in May, we got the full funding from a single investor for the movie and we we're filming like last two days, we've been full fledged filming with a full crew. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is I was telling the crew the other day, cause I always start with kind of a devotional breathing and just getting centered. And I was telling them both days, 
You know, guys, um, the magic is in the moment, which means right now today with uh, people who come in and this crew right here, the magic is in our experience today. I mean, it's great if we make a film and I think we will and it'll be amazing, but let's just live in, it was, um, it was big moments in a small frame, this song that I, 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 I shared with them. And it was about the magic happens like with uh, you and I in LA in the whole team, the magic happened that weekend. And we created some great shots that captured it. But to me, it's like, I really want to live in that moment because it's about like, what if the, the crew gets touched in some way or gets changed? That matters to me, not the production, not the final thing. Or yeah. the patient I'm sitting in front of today. And so I really was trying to bring it home about Let's live today in this moment and see what magic w that happens. And it's been absolutely amazing. So long story short, this idea became reality and I am filming a documentary and I don't even know what I'm doing, but I'm trusting and it's happening. <laughs> wow. You know, update for you. A, that, was, that really was, you know, to me, a powerful story. And, and also, I just want to say that time together we shared because we were able to connect in such a real and now way the energy that we all experienced on that and the things that we pulled through during that three days together, it's still with me and affecting me and sending ripples in every direction of my life, believe it or not. And that's the power of being connected and present in the now, especially when we're connected to our true authentic self, we bring a different light and energy and are also able to receive a different light and energy from those we're interacting with. So here's an update for you. Yes. I was just mesmerized listening to the magic of your story. It was one of those things where um, you, you had this thing, you created it in your mind, you knew from your production team what it would take to do this. Yeah. And you sent it out and asked the universe, if this is meant to be, let's, let me get the support. And within a short period of time, you got, not just from you know, a team of investors, one person yeah. who believes in what you're doing so much that he was willing to put the full amount forward mm -hmm. and become a partner in this project. Well, since we last spoke, I had the same exact thing happen just two weeks ago. Oh, I love it. <laughs> for the exact same number that you had come up with. It, it's like hard to believe. It's like, is this really happening? And it's really happening. I'm pouring into something I've been wanting to do my whole life that will take me in a new direction. It's something I've been dabbling in for several years. Yes. But uh, as, as it gets closer, I'll be talking more about it, but I'll give you a hint. It has to do with music, which is something that we connected with. Yes. Connected on immediately. Like when we were getting ready, and I love having music on in the background, it's, it's a great way to vibrationally just bring in a certain frequency or current. And her music, Dr. Jill's music, this is my theme song for, for yeah. me. This is the, the vibe for the day. And every song I was like, oh, I love this. I'm shazamming this. And, you know, I, tend to be someone who listens to a lot of music and I love great music of all kinds. And she had this particular frequency of electronic music that's in this sort of like, it border lines on a uh, high frequency inner world. Like it, it, when I was listening, it got my inner world tuned into a certain place, but it also related to the outer world. You know, there's most people when they think of electronic music, they think of club music or festival music, but this was like, a combination it was like anthemic but it was also very personalized i loved it so that's another area we clicked on right away um but you said something you said something about you are now recognizing that you're worthy of love yeah i want to say even taking a step further that you are love oh. and love flows through you because you've connected within to that divine awareness that worthiness is something we're taught many of us from the minute we're born is that a love is is a commodity that's in rare supply yeah that you know imagine disney and this someday my prince will come concept that love is going to come from one person eventually right you know when we when we're ready to launch from our families and that it's going to be hard to find and uh if we find it at all and you know and i thought how how much has that cheated us out of realizing that love is something that we can first develop and hold and discover within as an energy a frequency of life it is the life force yes and that it can come in so many forms everywhere we go every single minute of every day yes. there was so much love on that shoot together it was like this yeah. this buffet of all kinds of love magic because those are the people that you attracted and brought together for this very important shoot so um 
I, one of the things that I've discovered that's, that's helped me to live more authentically is, is clearing away anything that a blocks me. You know, you have this incredible body, but you've probably seen, you know, as you've dealt, you know, science and the medical field doesn't really teach about this. You know, they teach very little, not only about nutrition, but they don't really get into the, shall we say, uh, you know, it's very the physical laws of science. They don't get into the metaphysical or right. the quantum kinds of uh, things that are now showing up all over more than ever as the, as the fabric of all life that can more rapidly than anything change our reality as we know it. So um, as we get out of externalizing mm -hmm. worth by our accomplishments, by our materialistic things, by uh, you know our relationships, uh, and we go inside and we cultivate an alignment within, we, we begin to realize that the connection, it's an intrinsic worth thing. And we begin to realize we all have, it's part of our divine inheritance. We have from the one creator, the ability to have and express that from within. And the minute we stop transactionalizing it outside of us, yeah. a huge shift happens. Oh, that's you, you, I love this. Cause again, we're so aligned because that's exactly what I experienced before I could manifest the documentary and all that. I had to go through that transformation because yeah. I was looking for external validation through, I call it bad boyfriends, <laughs> just not yeah. healthy relationships and really emotional abuse. I mean, there were some really not good things there, but it was, yeah. because I was stuck in, I'm not valued. Like I didn't have any value for myself. So I just recreated, usually when that happens, we're just recreating a belief in ourselves and mirroring it from the outside. Yeah. And one thing you said that I think is so valuable for people to hear because it's not unique to me, but I was getting my val uh, validity and my love from achievement. And I'm recovering Ooh. perfectionistic, you know, whatever. But I literally yeah. all my life was like achieving, achieving, trying to get the good grades, trying to be valedictorian, be a doc, all these things. And all of that I had learned um, and I just taken it on. I don't think my parents were amazing. They gave me intrinsic value. But I think yeah. I somehow thought that I wasn't valuable unless I was producing or achieving. So I spent 40 years producing, achieving, and it was never enough, right? Like I was a doctor and I got through medical school and I was valid. Like these things actually happened. Happened, but none of those were enough to satisfy that longing in our soul for true love. And the love comes from the divine and from our um, belief that we are valuable. And so now I just feel like I'm a conduit for, and again, some of you hearing this might be like, oh, this is woo woo. It's not. Some of the best science is founded in the power of love to heal. And I'm not afraid anymore to speak yeah. about that because the yeah. truth is that's really where the power lies. Yes, it is a total mind, heart, body, spirit, mm -hmm. you know, through our thoughts, our emotional system, through our connection to spirit, because we are energetically first spirit. And then to uh, the physical vehicle, which really Matt is, is it's like an, uh, what shows up in our, our physical field is a manifestation of what has gone on way before yeah. uh, in our thoughts and emotions, which affects everything. It really does. Of course, Even there's you and I with the gut, right? Like that was because yeah. we had unhealed parts of ourselves that we had to deal with. And not that there isn't real physical things that we need surgery or medication sure. or herbs or whatever, because I do that. Of course, there's day. that too. Yeah. <laughs> but usually when we get to yeah, usually when we get to that point of disease, it's like we're way past that. Yeah. We can't just quickly do a, a few little right. things. It's like it's like showing up as a 911. This needs to be addressed. And so yeah, we we need great doctors and and experts in science to help us when it gets to that point, but then learning how to do more preventative health through nutritional and many other things. And, and that's what I noticed on our shoot. You had so many things you were doing that was like, oh, I love it when I'm around people that get it. And they're like the foods you brought to set the oh, yeah, my fridge, do. right? Like it get, well, that was just stuff I do at home, but yeah. we actually took photos of it. Cause it was like, uh, mineral water, fruits and vegetables, uh, all <laughs> <laughs> organic foods and then you yeah. brought superfoods and supplemental things that I was like oh, I've been looking for something like this and uh, one thing I want to share I with you even guys, gave you guys a b12 shot <laughs> oh yeah that was like I'm like I need this every week yes please uh you were just like a wealth of health and wellness and it was so fun to be in that zone so one one other thing I want to share that Dr. Jill introduced to me and all of us there at the shoot and I'm going to share with all of you on my, on my page, 
to a code, a special code so that you can have access to this. It is something that I first saw, well, I first experienced at the beginning of my, what I now know was a spiritual awakening several years ago yeah. when I met with the first healer, which I thought was, that was like, actually for me, seven years ago was a big thing. I was like, a healer? Wow. Okay, well, I have tried everything else. Let me let me just go, because a friend, actually, it's this, oh, I just, the same friend that is now helping me who, who's jumping wow, on my music project. Honest. Oh my gosh, that's great. Who was a, a big hairstylist and now he's doing so many other things. Oh, that's a story I'll have to tell you about. He is the one who recommended me. He said he went to this healer and I came through in this energetic, I was like, she is psyche. He's like, no, she's a healer, but you were like, came up in my psyche during this. Uh, and she, she changed my life, the direction of my life. So I went to her and, and just to bring this back to the point of why I brought it up was she had this healing mat, she called it, which was like a, they looked, it was a, the size of a massage table, uh, you know, big, like a yoga mat size. And it had inside of it, there were like these channels filled with uh, crystals, like uh, amethyst crystal. And she said that it brings a, a different frequency into it and explained it a little bit. It wasn't necessary to go into great detail. And I had just started discovering and tuning into some of that. I didn't know a lot about it, but I was like, cool, well, let's try this. Yeah. And, and so she took me into this, first we did a big interview. She took me into this meditative space though. She introduced me to something else I'd never really spent a lot of time with. It's called binaural beats. And yes. you, know, love, you were love, talking love, about- love. Yeah. I prescribe those to people for limbic activation because it takes the body yeah. into it. So yes, love, 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 binaural beats. So if you guys don't know what binaural beats are, um, they're basically different frequency channels or brain wavelengths. Mm -hmm. And it, it's used to help you entrain or become familiar with and, and then calibrate your ability to flip into different wavelengths. And each of those wavelengths, those frequency channels, you're able to perceive and tune into different information. That's what everything is. Our whole universe is frequency. And so... Through this, you know, we're, our alert state, we're talking about the left brain. Almost everything about this reality programs us to be very tied to the dense 3D physical frequencies, which are the analytical, problem solving, mm -hmm. you know, get up and go, make yeah. life happen kind of energy. But that's really just a very, it's actually not even the highest frequency. It's, it's our survival frequency. And few of us give ourselves the time we need because of the way the world's been set up to dive into some of these other zones, you know, some of us are familiar with meditation or prayer, or um, there's, I've met people who have what they call like psychic dreams or intuitive dreams that, you know, they get information from through dreams. But um, when I was sitting with her, we did this, this thing and it was the first time this had ever happened while I was on the mat. And I was like, is it the mat or was it the binaural beats or both? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it works. She took me into this deep, meditative space and I was just completely kind of gone into this space and it was the first time I'd ever had a download of I just started hearing music like music it was like hearing it on the radio and it was like a code was cracked and uh I didn't get a lot of other messages from that I thought I would get messages about you know healing and health there, there were some things we talked about but that was the most important thing that I got from that and I didn't realize the significance of it then. It was sort of an anomaly. And I thought, well, that was strange. I was like hearing music. And of course, that started my foray. But shortly after that, I went back to school to study electronic production techniques. As a child, I was a classical violinist. And for a while, my minor was music composition. But I ended up switching to film producing and directing. And that's what I graduated with. But years later now, I know that that's something that I've always wanted to do. And now I know what I want to do with it. And I've developed a regular connection to that ability to tap into something outside of myself and pull it into myself and translate that. And, and that's how I make music. I, I channel it, I guess is the word. But um, this, this brainwave entrainment has brought many other avenues that have been opened up to me. Um, it's also how I began to develop a regular connection to the non-physical world, the intuitive world, where there's all kinds of information and messages that we can tap into. Um, and I've had profound things come through and meeting people like you who have also, you know, I call it scuba diving in the non-physical, you, you pop through into that quantum field and you begin to understand that we 
actually create and determine our reality. Reality shows up around us based on how we think we are, how we see we are. The, the lens we see the world and are experiencing life through is, is a direct reflection of where we are energetically. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people might say, they came to you, let's say they came to you and they discover they have cancer. There was this doctor who used to famously tell her patients when they would get a diagnosis, she would ask them, why did you need this cancer? What, oh, you know, and they yeah. were like, what? They were shocked at first. <laughs> I don't want cancer, you yeah. know? Yeah. But through their journey to healing or their surrender to uh, what, what is meant to be for them, they always found out profound things and were able to heal things that went way yeah. beyond just that physical thing. And they always came back and, and said, Thank you for saying that at the beginning. It didn't, it rubbed me the wrong way at first, but now I know that through this illness, I gained profound insights and I was able to heal things I didn't yeah. even know needed to be healed. And my life is, is richer now and, and clearer and brighter. And, you know, so it, it takes me to that beautiful statement. The wound is where the light enters in. Yes, yes. And you and I have this journey because, and for, for sure, for me, I finally accepted I'm, I'm the God's Guinea pig. As far as he gives me these cancer, <laughs> Crohn's disease, mold, but what happened is every one of those, they were really difficult. I've suffered a lot, but, but they were the and best. You transmuted ever. a lot. Oh, and, and, and I would never be the healer that I am without those experiences because on, yeah. on so many levels, autoimmunity, cancer, chronic environmental toxicity, I have been there. I have, and what I did is I did the work around how do I heal and figure it out at a deep level. And I don't always have all the answers, but a lot of things I could never, ever find in a textbook. Um, and they come from this experiential like journey of figuring it out to heal myself so that now I can help hundreds or thousands of people with yes. their journeys. Um, so I interrupted you on the map because this is an awesome, oh. awesome segue, but go oh, yeah. back. To Thanks for bringing me back to that. I know we have like, we could do volumes. I know. <laughs> I love it. Different things we could dive into, which is so fun. That always, I love it when I meet people where we're just, it's like this. We're totally. just on so many levels. So the healing mat, I had an experience with that. And I, and I actually, years later, I went to this biohacking conference that this incredible speaker, she used to be a host on Extra and Access Hollywood, Michelle Soro. She now has a very successful podcast. She asked me to be her first podcast mm -hmm. interview two, two years ago because she met me when I was at uh, QVC doing training for oh, yeah. uh, going on their show. So um, we became, we had a similar thing where we connected instantly and we discovered we had both been to Tony Robbins uh, date with destiny and it, uh -huh. it was transformative for both of us. And um, so she took me to this biohacking conference where she was hosting and the guy that I, I'm going to mess up his name. If you know it, you might know it, but he's kind of the one who, He's, he's a doctor, I think, that br brought this biohacking conference. He uh, has a coffee line and a lot of other products. Oh, yeah. Dave Asprey? That's the one. Dave yeah. Asprey. So he, um, with this, has like, you can you go to these all these speakers and the conferences all weekend, three-day weekend. But then there's like a forum where you can go and find out about all the latest technologies, yeah. devices, nutritional uh, things, health things that are kind of connected to some would say the pseudo science, the pseudo health field, but it seems to be the emerging thing for us is that there's a lot we can do with light, sound and frequency technology to heal and transform our lives. So yeah. anyways, one of the things he had there was, uh, I saw they had this mat that was, was loaded with amethyst, yeah. tourmaline and charcoal. And I was, it, was, it was quite expensive. You know, I, at the time it was more than you can get them for now, but I really wanted one because I had experienced firsthand what it did for me in just one session. So here's Dr. Jill in Malibu. She's like, by the way, have you had a chance to, to lay on the mat? And I was like, I want to do that. Absolutely. And, and she told me this has, you know, some different things that are the latest technology. It has ionization. Mm -hmm. So it can eliminate the, is it the free radicals of the, yeah, so it has the negative, negative ions. ions. And I always just tell people, it's like if you're walking barefoot on the beach or after rain, those are negative ions in the air after some energetic shift in the uh -huh. weather. And we feel refreshed if we go out after the rain or walking on the beach. That's just negative ions in our environment. It naturally happens. Uh -huh. But then we can create it on the mat. It's funny because if you guys wonder, I'm going to show you right down there. My dogs are sleeping on it, but I have the mat right down oh, there. Oh, they even know. Look they at do. that. They even know. My 16-year-old, he's like 98 in human years. And that white one that you saw there, he is 
16 years old and he is hopping around. He sits on that mat every day. He loves it. And they do. They, you saw it. I didn't plan that. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we like the mat, mom. <laughs> so it's ionizing. It has yeah. infrared yeah. technology, which does a number of things. Yeah. Um, and that does de- the infrared uh, goes more to a cellular level and helps with detoxification. So it has the negative ions, the infrared, and then the big thing is the pulsed electromagnetic pulse. frequency, the PEMF. And just like you, Spencer, I knew. I mean, I'll just give a number. My friend had one that cost twenty thousand dollars, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so un. Um, realistic for most not people. accessible yeah no and even for me that's a lot of money yeah, so it's um, a car yeah for totally. some people so this is yeah the ones that we i shared that travel i had just gotten the travel one from higher dose and i was like i'm gonna take it to la and it was so fun to have because i literally use it every day i didn't want to be a day without it <laughs> well since so jill was so gracious and this was just one of the many gifts that have come from knowing you this short time was so gracious and surprised me by sending me out a mat. And I was like ready to find out when she, she had a sale so I could buy one. By the way, thank you oh. from the bottom of my heart. So generous. And I love it. I use it every day. Yay. My guy uses it. We've had friends awesome. come over. Awesome. And I want to share with you guys about this mat. So I'm going to put on my, my uh, page with a code so that you can have access from Dr. Jill, another one of her many gifts, to get your very own. And it is literally, now I do every day, at least 10 to 20 minutes, if I can, sometimes longer. Sometimes here, here I will take a nap with it on. I know, me too. <laughs> uh, and, and you wake up feeling, if you do, or just from a meditation, it, it amplifies the state and the the readiness and and rapidness of aligning healing and being in peak state you know and when we're in peak state we perform better we get more done with less energy we attract more magical people and situations and it just has i can't even tell you the benefits um i didn't ask you to say this by the way either but thank you you're so kind like to i mean to share this with because it is people have heard me talk about i love it but it's literally I only align with things that I use and I love. So there's no yeah. like commercial here. We just love it. <laughs> um, but I, I really appreciate we know that it that works. Answer. Because, and, and even for you, I was like, oh, if I can, I felt like you and the photographer, Mike, um, and Mike Allen and the producer, the three of you, you just poured out your hearts for me that weekend. And I was just like, how in the world can I thank you for the gift that you gave me? Like you created magic for me. And like I said, I'm just this little farm girl from Illinois who doesn't belong in LA, but I was like, you made me feel special and you allowed my light to shine and you captured it in the photographs. And I just, it literally came from a place of how in the world could I possibly thank you? And it's such a small thank you, but it also, it was just a like, I wanted you to know how much it meant to me. And mm. so that's where it came from. <laughs> well, it's a treasure. And it definitely is something that it's like one of the most useful gifts that I didn't know I needed. Right. <laughs> I knew I wanted it, but I didn't know I needed it. It would yeah. benefit so much. And oh, good. so, you know, as one of the things we were talking about was popping through and, and going into that quantum realm. Mm-hmm. We talked about brainwave entrainment and meditation is really something I didn't know how to do. And it was painful learning. I couldn't even sit still mm-hmm. for 30 seconds. So I was trying to do like guided meditations and I just didn't really understand it until it clicked one day. And I was like, Oh, this is about learning how to switch frequency fields. And the reason is because there's different information yeah. available in those fields. You know, going from alpha, beta, down to delta, yeah, yes. zeta, gamma, yeah. you know, all these different brain waves. And did we, your sleep get better too? Because my sleep was, that was the biggest thing. Oh, yeah. the objective. I have the aura ring so I can track it. And like night and day, I would sometimes get like 50, 60% of the night of sleep in deep sleep and wake up after five and a half, six hours of completely refreshed because I would be in all of this deep refreshing. It's amazing. Like, it was- Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, sleeping and getting quality sleep, the, the amount of time you spend in certain brain waves, wave, brain wave states will determine how you feel. Mm-hmm. I, I remember a period of, of my, my life where I would, I would sleep and couldn't get enough sleep and I would wake up exhausted. Yeah. And I had a lot of strange dreams and things were it was the energy I was off. And I think I even was where I was living at that time was near a lot of dirty frequency. Yeah, yeah. And it really affected me when I realized looking back, that's exactly what it was. Um, so it definitely 
affects us to agree. And we, we now have you know, technology around us all the time yeah. with our smart devices, our computers, our phones, our internet, 5G. There's all this frequency we're constantly bombarded with that does and will affect us if we don't take time and, and learn ways to Maybe. create shields and yeah. separation from it and how to change our diet and health to create balance and harmony and clear out the effects of some of these negative uh, frequencies that can really be begin to take a toll. Um, so I used to sleep with my phone right by the bed. Yeah. I, I can still be better because sometimes I do have it there, but I'm trying to put it way across the room. Yeah. Not or at by the very me. least like airplane mode or something where you're not getting the, um, the Wi-Fi and all of that. Yeah. Um, so, well, this has just been, oh my gosh, we're going to have to do it again because we got so much to talk about. We've scratched um, the surface. I know. What kind of thing would you leave? I didn't get a chance to hear a lot. I mean, you really see people and I see that. And again, you're working with some really high profile people. And I love that you're this healer in a, in a space where people wouldn't necessarily expect you to be a healer, but you are. And what would you... Um, say to leave like people again we've had lots of comments about well what if my outer beauty i have been you know disfigured by disease or i have illness where i um what would you we like the core here has been inner beauty how do we really shine any la any bits of advice to give someone who's suffering from yes. illness and feels like they're unattractive or how, what would you say to them i i have some key things that i can give people and, and share because i i felt disfigured or damaged in my life after I had that surgery I felt like part of me was taken out you know yeah, yeah. Um, there's other things we could talk about but I would say that the trap of perfectionism and yeah. idealism based on externalities is a way to become rapidly very unhappy and you know I noticed too like you know when you spend hours a day on social media and you're exposed to all of this external external you know it actually does have an effect on yeah. the psyche. And, and so I would say this, um, perfection isn't, what is perfection anyway? There's really no, no such thing as the perfect this or that because right. there's so many variations that can be perfectly uniquely expressed. And there is, there is also uh, satisfaction, fulfillment. It, that's what, what we're looking for is not, perfection because that's an externalized something a concept so with people i i ask them questions and i listen and, and when i'm guided to ask certain questions it isn't that that i need the answer so much as that well sometimes i do i need to listen and see what, what where they're at and what they're saying because that tunes me into where they are but when i'm guided to ask certain questions as i know you have with patients you're also guiding them to begin to uncover and begin that excavation process of chiseling away all this exterior, the masks and the layers that really aren't us. And by chiseling down to that masterpiece, um, I think of Michelangelo and like the David, you know, some yeah. of the Greek and Roman sculptural elements that we, we look back as uh, the period of art that defined, uh, you know, this is ideal. Now, in many ways, I think our souls are like that. And, and we have, the mission of excavating and bringing out our best light magic. Some of the most beautiful people I've ever met have had severe disabilities or limitations in this physical, but sometimes those limitations actually activate superpower gifts that blow past any limitation. One of my friends, Amy Purdy, she's a, a uh, double amputee, uh, right, right, right above her knee. She had both her legs amputated. Um, she, like many powerful light workers, have often have really challenging, even life-threatening illnesses or you know, challenging things in their youth that caused them to grow up really rapidly. She was one of those and went from total health to losing her legs in a very short time through a run-in with meningitis. Anyhow, she's now a two-time winning Paralympian athlete. She lives life with two prosthetic legs. She, through her focus and will to move forward has helped that industry create all kinds of new wow. new prosthetics and legs and attachments and for things for people to be able to do sports and have full active lives this girl is and she still had some challenges after that with her health she's come up against unbelievable challenges and against all that has risen to become she's 
spoke with Oprah on, on her Super Soul Sunday. She's released books and had bestsellers. She was on Dancing with the Stars. And that's where I met her at, actually, yeah. because she was on that show. And I was, of course, taking care of Julianne Huff, who was one of the hosts of Judges. Yeah. So um, you never know what can come through your greatest challenges. Yeah. And if you can become, uh, let that, instead of hating that part of yourself, we all have a shadow side too. And that's sometimes maybe yes. not a physical <clears throat> you know, ailment, but <clears throat> excuse me. if we can go into <clears throat> lean into the shadow yeah. and learn to love that part of ourselves and bring that into the light, that's when we will become the most beautiful. Oh, <clears throat> I love, love that. Yeah, that's where we can we kind of wrap up because it's. Um, I always say it's our impact imperfections that make us more lovable. It's like the pieces, the flaws, the scars. The it makes us more unique and lovable. But so often those are the parts that we disown. And when we start to embrace and love those parts of ourselves, um, they really are. They're the things like we don't want to see. Uh, so often the little uniquenesses about our fav favorite <coughs> actresses or people on TV or whatever. Those are the things we love about them. The little nuances, right? So. Yeah. Um, amazing. Uh, stay tuned, everybody. You know, I think uh, if Spencer has a moment, we are going to actually jump on Instagram um, live. So you can follow us there. I'm going to um, stop this video feed shortly, but find us. Um, it's Spencer Barnes LA and mine is Dr. Jill Carnahan on Instagram. And we're going to just say a few uh, words there shortly. So we will see you all soon. Spencer, thank you for joining me here today. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. And thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure knowing you the short time and here's the best is yet to come. Yes. <laughs>